Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. We ought to be willing and ready to praise Him anytime yes. and all the time. Yes. Amen. Because God has certainly been good to us. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 12, please. Open your Bible and turn with me to the 30th verse, the 12th chapter. 30th verse, you'll find this phrase repeated several times in the 12th chapter and also in the 30th chapter concerning a great cry, not, not just a whimper, not just a scream. Not someone yelling in the night, but the Bible dignifies it by saying a great cry. Come on. Now, I have a multicultural ministry. That means basically that when God called me, he sent me into all the world. Not just one ethnic group, not just one color of people, or just one kind of people, but to all the people. That's called a Jesus ministry. Amen. Jesus came to all of the world. Yes, it is. Whoever is in it. Yes. Come on. Whoever makes it up, whoever is part of this world. Jesus has come to deliver. Amen. Now, in my lifetime, I have spent a lot of ministry time among the black culture, giving much of my life to the, the West Indies or the uh, islands of the sea, or another word, the Caribbean. Yet even another word, the Caribbean, islands of the sea. And uh, I wouldn't take anything for that part of my ministry. The Lord willing, the week of our Thanksgiving in November, third week of November, I am scheduled to be in Freeport, Grand Bahama for the purpose of a, a <coughs> crusade. And it's not my first time there. I don't know how many times I've been there. I don't know how many times I've been to the islands. I have no idea how many times I've traveled in and about the country of Haiti. And this goes on and on. I can, I can repeat this over and over. And one thing that I have discovered about the black culture, and I say this with great respect, nobody <laughs> mourns like they mourn. Nobody will cry and weep yes, come like on. they cry and they weep. Yes, Lord. Especially in the passing of a loved one. You, you go to the funeral service of a where a mother has passed and perhaps she is of age and she's left children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and hundreds of friends and distant family members and all oh, it just turns into, be, into being an awful sad situation because the black culture certainly mourns and weeps over the loss that they experience in life. Now, not so with some other cultures. Uh, I've, I've been to some funerals where there wasn't a, a tear shed. Come on, brother. There wasn't a broken heart. There wasn't any sadness. I, I grew up in the time here in America, here in the Deep South, where at the passing of a loved one, if you didn't bring them home, to spend whole time at home with 
the family before you buried them, then that meant you didn't love them. My, my father was brought home before his burial for several days. My, my stepfather was brought home before his burial for several days. My brother was brought home before his burial. And that was a custom in, in the deep south. When a loved one passed away, then before burial or graveyard time, you brought that loved one home in their coffin, and there the family fellowshiped and friends gathered to bid their last goodbyes. Come on. And the mourning, the weeping, the crying. Yes. I, I can remember when my brother was killed in Vietnam. My, my mother knew it two weeks before the official announcement came that her son had died in battle in Vietnam. One, one morning she awoke and began to weep and as the day progressed she cried more and until after a while she was wailing and weeping and sometimes would cry out and Heartbreak and heart pain. Mom, what's wrong? What has happened, Mama? Are you sick? Do you, do you need to go to the hospital? Uh, are you in pain? What's happened, Mother? Well, I can't ex exactly explain it, but I think something's happened to my son. I think something's happened to Lamar. And, and then... Through the night, then the next day, I know my son has gotten killed. I know, I know he's died. There had been a oh, mom. If something had happened to Lamar, they would have already notified. It took them two weeks before they finally came with a limousine <coughs> out to that country home, country farmhouse. Got out of the car with their uniforms on. And mother looked out the front door and screamed, I told you that my son had been killed in Vietnam. And they came in with an official letter, an official word, sat her down with the rest of us and told us for sure. Two weeks earlier, Miss Poole, your son was killed in Vietnam. And all the horrific wails and screams and cries and I wasn't but about 13 years of age but I can remember it it forever changed my life amen one of my sisters laid all night in a nearby room in that old farmhouse while he laid in a coffin there in the front room and she wailed and screamed and yelled and turned and twisted and cried in agony upon agony upon agony. And so that is what we find here. In Exodus chapter 12, God had attempted to get Egypt's attention. But Egypt refused to give God their attention. God sent his servants to them, but they refused the voice of the word of the Lord. And so in God's desperation, God sent the great ten plagues to the land of Egypt. It is still said today that in the life of humankind, that the ten plagues upon the land of Egypt were the ten worst epidemics that has ever plagued the earth. Ten of the worst things that has ever happened to the human race. The, the ten epidemics, the worst of history. Number one, water turned to blood. Number two, the plague of frogs.
Can, can you ladies imagine uh, pulling back the bed covers and beneath the bed covers there's nothing but frogs. You, you lay down, put your head on the pillow to rest for the night and feel something squirming under your head or your neck and you reach around trying to find out what it is and, and your hand takes hold of a frog. That, that was the land of Egypt when God sent the plague of frogs. Frogs everywhere. Well, that still didn't give their attention. So God sent the biting insects and the wild animals that plagued them and bit them. And then God sent the livestock diseases and, and their boils uh, upon, upon the people and upon the livestock. Then God sent the fiery hail, hail falling out of heaven, great rocks of hail. But instead of it being ice and snow, it was fireballs. <coughs> Balls of fire Come on. coming out of the heavens. And then he released the locust that plagued the fields. And then gross darkness. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is in gross darkness today. Yes, it is. Amen. Gross Amen. darkness is plaguing the human race yes. one more time. Yes, it is. And Come then on. you have the death of the firstborn. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of things that gets the attention of humans, but nothing gets the attention of the human race like the death of the firstborn. Yes. When, when God spoke to a servant and said, tell Egypt, prepare yourself because a death angel is going to pass by. There's a message that death has Come on, that brother. man cannot receive any other way except by the loss of a loved one or a close friend. Amen. That there's a message that a coffin has. Yes, it does. That no other piece of furniture created by mankind has to offer like the message of a coffin. And here in the 12th chapter of the 30th verse, there said, the Bible says, there was a great cry. A great cry throughout the land of Egypt because there was not a house where there was not one dead. You, you see, Moses had said, Moses had said, the death angel is passing through. Yes. Come on. He's going to come across the land of Egypt, the continent of Africa, and said when he comes, the only thing that's going to protect your home is to have the blood of a lamb yes. Yes. Amen. Come on. placed upon the lintels yes. and the doorpost come on. of your home. Come the on. blood of a lamb. Yes. Amen. And, and so the servant of the Lord said to the Egyptians and to the Israelites held in bondage in Egypt, said, Go to the farmhouse. Come on. Find the little lambs yes. and choose the purest of the little lambs. Take the purest one. Go to the backyard and cut a, a branch of hyssop and kill that lamb. Drain his blood in a basin. Take that branch of hyssop and dip it down into that basin of blood. Come Take on. that bloody branch of hyssop and anoint the doorpost. Come on. And anoint the door lentils. And for the first time in the Holy Bible, you see the sign of the cross. Yes, yes. Amen. <laughs> the servant of God said, anoint the door lentils and anoint the doorpost. The sign of the cross. The first time in Scripture 
You, you, you see the vision of the coming cross. You, you see the symbol uh, of the coming bloodshed that's going to be poured out on the old rugged cross. Yes. We don't like to sing the old rugged cross. Come on, bro. On a hill far away. Come on. Still an old rugged cross. It brings back too much memory. Come on. We think about death when you think about the old rugged cross. Come on. A, a man unworthy to have to die. Come on. A man that had committed no harm, no crime, had, had done no evil toward anybody, being put to death and hanging on a cross. Yes. It brings back too much memory. But ladies and gentlemen, the church today needs to remember. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. The price Jesus paid. Yes, yes. Amen. When he died on the cross. Yes. That you and I might be set free yes. from yes, the bondage on. of sin. Amen. Oh, somebody. Yes. Amen. Come on. And so Moses said, take that lamb and spill his blood. Pour his blood out and anoint the doorpost. And said the death angel is going to pass by. And the death angel said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Come on. There's not the one thing that matters when it comes to die. Has the blood been applied? Amen. I'm Come not on. talking about being a friend to the church. I'm not talking about being a member of the church. Come on. I'm not talking about shaking a preacher's hand. Yes, go I'm not Come talking on. about being baptized in Amen. water. Come on. I'm not talking about reading the Holy Bible. Come on. I'm not talking about singing in a church choir. I'm talking about as the blood yes. and the Lamb of God. The blood of the Son of God. Yes. I'm on. talking about the blood of God Himself. And the blood of Jesus been applied to your soul. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Come on. Glory. Amen. Glory. I think sometimes we reach a place if we think we're a friend to the preacher. Amen. Then, then we've got everything made. Come on. No, bro. sir. There'll be a lot of people in hell. Yes, it will. Amen. Who shook a preacher's hand. That's true. And it didn't make a bit of difference whose hand they shook. Amen. Amen. Come on. I'm not talking about joining the church. There's going to be a lot of folks in hell yes, yes. who was a member Come on, of yeah. the church. Yes, they joined the church, but they had never had their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Listen Come on. to me. Yes. You can be a member of the church, yes. or you can be a member of the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes. They can turn you out of the church, but they can't take your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. If the Holy Ghost puts your name there, your name is there to stay. Somebody shall amen. 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 Hallelujah. No man can pluck you out of the hand of God. Somebody shall amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And so here, a great cry was heard. Because when they awoke in the morning, there was not a house where there was not one dead. That seems like a mystery, doesn't it? Come on. Yes. When, when, the, when the servant of the Lord said, if, if the death angel sees the blood, he'll pass over. Come on. But here you are, Pastor. You're saying that there was not a house where there was not one dead. Every house had one dead that morning in Egypt. Come on. Either there was a lamb that had died, or the firstborn of that home was dead, including the firstborn of all the cattle. It was a judgment of God. God sent a message to give the attention of the people. Amen. 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 Come on. Can you imagine the attention people was willing to give God? Come on. Yes. That morning when they looked out the great farms and saw the firstborn of the cattle dead in the field and women got up to do their morning duties 
and then thought about it well the baby has it woke up for breakfast this morning come on I better go in and check the crib and check my baby and, Bless him up. and the baby appears to be asleep well this is unusual the mother is thinking so she rocks the little crib puts her hand on that lifeless form and and the war the warmth is gone no, nothing is there but coldness life has departed yes Lord. either the firstborn of a lamb that died in sacrifice or the firstborn of that house was dead Come on. Because of judgment. Yes. Come on. Amen. Amen. Am I preaching the truth Amen. here? Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Back years ago, there it was a knock came on our door, and uh, it was the police department. I answered the door, said, "Are you, are you Reverend Poole?" And I said, "Yes, sir." Are, are you Pastor Poole? Yes, sir. How can I help you? Said, well, I don't know if you can or not. But said, there's a, a young family over here. A few miles away that the young mother went to the baby bed to check on the care of her baby this morning and said found the baby dead come on and said she's picked that baby up and has sat there in the front room said the husband called the police we in turn called the ambulance Said so we've been there for hours now. But that young mother won't let us have that baby. And, and we don't know what to do. And someone in the family told us that, that they've attended your church. And we're wondering if there's anything you can do. Come on. Can, can you help us yes, Lord. with this situation? I said, well, I don't know. But we'll get dressed real quick and we'll go with you over. I still didn't know who it was. And so we met the police over there and went in and that young mother was on the front sofa. Had that baby wrapped up in a blanket and holding that lifeless baby in her arms and Recognized me and said, I'm going to tell you now. You, you're not going to take my baby. Said, said, if you think you've come to get my baby, said, you're not going to take my baby. I sat down beside her, tried to console her. She just pulled away. I tried to pat her there on the leg a little bit on the knee or on her shoulder, console her. Try to lend her a little strength, and no, she wouldn't have it. And the husband, a young man, would get up and try to move in close. She said, "Get away! Don't don't come close to me and my baby." She said, "I'm telling you now, you're not taking my baby." And the paramedic said, "Now, ma'am," said, "This is something that has to be done. There's no way around it." We, we have to take this baby and we have to medically pronounce it dead. And then we have to take this baby to a mortician somewhere. And they have to prepare this child for burial. It, it must be done. It's the laws of the land. There's no way around it. No way around it whatsoever. You're not taking my baby. I love my baby. And I'm telling you now, you're not taking my baby. My wife and told and at a certain moment I nodded. What I did, she took that girl and threw her back 
against the back of that sofa and pinned her there. And I took her fingers one by one and pulled her fingers, pried them loose off of that baby and reached in her arms and took that baby out of his mother's arms and put it in the arms of those that came after the child. A few days later, it came time for a burial. Once again, I was called on to do that service and so we went to the graveyard, just a little graveyard service and walked out there, the family gathered, the mother was screaming, you're not going to bury my baby. I looked over there and sat there in what looked like a, a Kmart or a Walmart styrofoam ice cooler. Little old cheap looking cooler. And in that cooler was that baby dressed up, laying in that little bucket. You're not going to put my baby in that hole. You're not going to put that lid down on my baby's coffin. You're not going to do it. Her screaming and tears flowing like a river and crying and carrying on. It was... I mean, she meant every word of it. And so I said a few words and then she said, well, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving this. And you're not going to make me leave this gravesite. I'm not leaving. Well, the husband went and got the car and he brought it down as far into the graveyard as he could get it. And I took her by one arm and my wife took her by the other arm and we drugged that woman, that young mother, drugged her. Somebody had to do it. I don't know why the preacher gets the dirty jobs. The hard jobs. Yes. But you think about it. Yes. I've worked all kind of work in my lifetime. I've never worked a job any harder than I was working that day, Brother Turner. Come on, somebody. We drug that woman. She drug her heels in that ground. We had to pick her up and pull her. She drug her toes in, in the dirt. And finally, I stopped in the middle of it and broke down. And I looked up to God and I said, Oh, God. Do you care? Do you even understand today? And real softly he whispered, he said, I do care. And I do understand. I followed my own son into a graveyard and left him there. And the church today if the weather is right, we might be there. If it's convenient, we might pray. If it's not too much trouble, we might lend a helping hand. If it's not much of a hardship, we might reach down to a fallen neighbor and try to lift them back up to their feet. And God said, I understand what you're going through. I followed my own son into a graveyard and had to turn around and walk away from Calvary and leave him there, hear him screaming, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Come Amen, on. somebody. Come on, brother. God help us all. To give God the attention that he deserves. And the attention that he needs. Amen. I walked in here this morning and I thank God for every one of you here. I want to tell you, if you hadn't been here, that be I'd be I'd be a silly person being in here by myself this morning. Amen. If, if, if you weren't here, I, I'd look kind of silly up here, uh, opening the Bible and reading a piece of scripture. 
walking up and down these aisles and preaching to these pews with nobody here. It'd be kind of silly, wouldn't it? About the only thing I could, could do, I guess, is have a little prayer and thank God for His goodness to me and, and then just go on out and have breakfast somewhere. Amen. So I thank God for every one of you. But my heart almost broke when I saw the ones that was missing. It was about more than I could bear. Emily, have you ever been there? You and your husband as a pastor? Have you ever been there? Yes, amen. Amen. Yes. And some of them enjoying victories today that I won for them. Amen. They, they can say, well, I prayed too. Well, their, their, their prayers just floated around somewhere. I'm the one that spent hours and days in prayer and fasted meals and lost weight. And I went back to the office and said, God, do you care? Do you understand? He said, of course I care. And of course I understand. It's not you they've walked away from, but it's my only son. They walked away from <coughs> Oh, God help us. Amen. And so, God said, Egypt, I'll get your attention one way or the other. Yes, sir, I'm not through with you yet. The, the, the fireballs of hell, you didn't pay that too much attention. The locusts, eating your crops, you didn't pay that too much attention. <laughs> the the water turning into blood. Come on, brother. Amen. Amen. Come on. Now we're gonna have to buy a new ice cooler out here, a water cooler. It's one finally burned up, and uh, but you get water there. At least you cut it on, and it's water. It's not blood coming up. Come on. But the bloody water didn't get Egypt's attention. Lord. But the day the firstborn were dead, a great cry <laughs> was heard. When I was a little boy, I, I used to think about odd things. Now, I just think about odd things once in a while. Come on, brother. And one thing I always thought about was what would happen if at the same time, irregardless of the time change, that, that we calculated it the right time around the world, and at the same time around the world, every human being started screaming and screaming for 60 seconds. One full men Come on. around the world. Every human. Every single living person. Would it be heard around the world? Always wondered that. Come on. Yeah. Would it be heard across the seas? Through the mountains? Yeah. Down beyond the valleys? Come on. Could it be heard? It's something to think about it. Yes. Well here there was a cry and a scream so loud and so long until it was heard throughout the land of Egypt. Yes, sir. I've been across that continent of Africa several times. I've, I've been a number of times to the land of Egypt. I've, I've climbed the pyramids. Yeah, me. I did. Somebody point your finger at me and say, he did. He did. He climbed the pyramid. He did. I, I rode my camel through the land of Jordan, Egypt, Israel, 
fished on the Nile River where baby Moses was placed and floated in a basket down the Come Nile on. River. Come on. And they found a little crying baby in a fish basket and saved his life. And God revealed himself to Moses one day when Moses came up on a burning bush. <laughs> it wasn't a miracle that the bush was burning. In the Sinai Desert or the great deserts of the earth, bushes often burn. Come on. The sun shines, reflects off of a grain of sand. Yes. The sand works like a uh, a heavy glass and a magnifying glass and that ray of sun, sunshine beam hits a brittle leaf or a dead piece of wood or scrub and it ignites in a blaze and burns. It wasn't no miracle that Moses saw a burning bush. The miracle was it burned but it wasn't consumed. Amen. Amen. It burned, but it wouldn't burn up. <coughs> and suddenly, a voice came out of the bush, and the burning bush spoke. And the fire said, Moses, Moses, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Amen. Come on, man. I thank God is saying to some churches in the world, let my people go. Yes. Amen. Come You've on. held them bound in religion yes. and tradition. Let my people go. I've come to set them free. Yes. And whom the Son of Man sets free, they're free indeed. Somebody shout glory to God. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. Moses said, I'm an unlearned Person, I don't have a degree in Bibleology. So who am I going to tell has sent me? And God revealed him said, Go tell them that I am, that I am, has <coughs> authorized you. I'm preaching a message this morning under divine authorization. Come on. Go oh. That I am, that I am, that I am, yes. has given me a message. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. God knows how to get our attention. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes, he does. It won't be many days from today a tragedy will come. Yes. And you'll hear a great cry going up. In the land of Delonica. God knows how to bring us to our knees. He knows how to bring us to the cross. He knows how to bring us to Calvary. Somebody said, but I'm I'm faithful, I'm a Christian. Come on now. Well, let's Oh, so proud. Let's see. Let's see how God moves in a few days. I beg for mercy. Come on, brother. I've gone between the porch and the altar. Yes, Lord. God have mercy on my people. These are my people. You leave them alone. They're my people. God said, son, you're all mine. They were mine before I leaned, lent them to you. And I know how to get my people's attention. Amen. Amen. Come on. Well, the Turner's been in a great revival over under the tent and different speakers. And I've heard a, the greatest report out of Brother Wiley. It seemed, it seemed like they, he's the one yes. they talked about Amen. favorably and said 
said, what a message the old man preached. If he was here this morning, he'd be saying, preach it, young man. Preach it. What you're preaching is true. Anoint your post with the blood. Amen. Anoint this door with the blood. And that, that looks almost Catholic, don't it? And, and, and we don't like Catholics. We make fun of them. Amen. They make fun of us. And the truth of the matter is, they make too much to do over Mary, and we don't make enough to do over her. Somebody say amen. Amen. When God says she's blessed above all women, yes. then she's blessed yes. Yes, she above is. all women. Amen. 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 Yes. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's what that means. The Catholic emblem. Emblem. The cross. Put the blood over these windows. These windows. These windows. These windows over here. This door. This door back here. This door back here. These front doors. I sprinkle the blood over those automobiles out there. If there's a car wreck coming. I plead the blood over your car. That it's not your car. It's not going to be your automobile. Yes, Lord. The death angel is going to pass through Jelanica. Yes, I pray it's not your home. It's not your house. And somebody shout in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus. Christ of death. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. It's the death angel. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand with me for a few minutes, please. Hallelujah. I need a, need a cloth. Glory to God. Come on, Kenny. Brother Turner. Y'all come on up, please. Glory to God. He feels the Holy Ghost here. Glory. That RV, that fifth wheel. RV sitting back there. Leave the blood of Jesus over that door. Yes. Over the windows of that place. Glory to God. I plead it over this property. Yes. Abba Samahaya. Shandabakohu Sikama. Glory to God. I plead the blood of the Holy Ghost over your husbands, yes. over your wives, yes. over your children, and your children's children, yes. over your homes, yes. your houses, your jobs, yes. your automobiles, yes. and your pocketbooks, yes. everything that belongs to you. I plead the blood of Jesus over yes. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I protect you. Yes, Lord. In the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the Lord. Woo! Woo! Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Hallelujah. So glad y'all came today. Any, any face that you fail to see, 
I don't care what the excuse is. When you think about Calvary, it's not good enough. The excuse. But you know what the truth of the matter is? I can't affect every person. There's some that's going to fall between my fingers no matter how tight I squeeze. They're going to be left by the wayside. Does it break your heart? For just a little bit, I'd go into deep sorrow like that little mama did. I'll, I'll remember those words to the day death comes to me. You're not going to take my baby from me. Preacher, you, you're not going to take my baby out of my arms. My God, I wish we cared for souls that much. Went to the hospital one time, crawled in the bed, and an old woman's in her bed, she was in the bed, died. And the son said, Come pray for mama, she's died. And I said, She hates me and hates the church I pastor. They said, But we know you real. So she might hate you, but we, she knows you're real. So come pray for mama. And I knew the woman hated me the last time she spoke to me. She just cursed me out. And one to that day, we didn't, we didn't live but about a half mile off the beach. And the church wasn't but about a half mile off the church, off the beach. And the hospital's between me and the beach. So a quarter of a mile perhaps and got in the car and I went down to the hospital and I didn't know what in the world I'd do. Walked in there, all the children, Ruby, all the kids together to say goodbye to Mama. And I just walked on in through the crowd. Some of them didn't, didn't like me. They hated me. Walked up to her bedside, Emily, and kicked my shoes off. Took my coat off and laid it through the bed. I didn't even know then what I was doing. I didn't know. I was just doing what was coming into my spirit. And I reached and took the sheet and pulled it back. Turned around and sat down on the edge of that bed. Kicked my feet up on the bed and pulled the cover up on us. She said, what the H are you doing? And I said, your son called me and told me you was dying. And I decided to come and I'm not going to let you go to hell. I'm going to hold on to you. And refused to let you go to hell. I reached over and took her hand into my hand. And I just laid there. Just laid there some more. Some more. Laid there some more. After a while I felt the bed quiver a little bit. I was afraid, but I turned my eye over, cut my eyes over toward her a little bit, and I seen a tear drop out of her eye. She said, Don't let me slip it down. 
my letter to Jesus that day. Got up, put my shoes on, and put my coat on. Got in my car and drove a quarter, half a mile. Got out, went through the garage into the kitchen. Heard the phone ringing. Yes, yes. Answered the phone, and it was the boy. He said, Brother Poole, I said, yes. He said, Mama just went ahead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Everybody, Hallelujah. take someone by the hand, please. Oh, blessed be the Lord. I, I preach with compassion today. I preach with a burden. And I preach with conviction. Now that's all I can do. As far as I'm concerned, everyone in every person in here is is a Christian as far as I know. If if that's not true, then it's beyond my knowledge. I don't know it. But I want you to step out and that person you're holding hands with, bring them with you just for a few minutes. And let's stand here together at the altar. We're going to close the service in a few minutes and we're going to receive the morning tithe and offerings. All of that will come, but Right now, let's just join together here. Hear the order. Amen. And let us have a, a closing prayer together. You don't really know what you're doing, do you? <laughs> yeah. Amen. Do you go to church in a certain place? I didn't think so, but that's all right. You're here today. That's what counts. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Now let's pray for each other. For the Lord to help us by His grace to make heaven our home. Lord Jesus, we love you today. We praise you so much. You're a great God, a wonderful God, a lovely Savior. You're the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. Lord, we really are thankful for your loving kindness. While we were sinners, you loved us so much that you died for us. Lord Jesus, we we touch each other, meaning that we're praying for one another. Let my friend go to heaven. Make sure the blood of Jesus is applied. Help them, help them to make heaven their home. Yes, Lord. Don't let them die lost. But let Jesus be Lord and Savior. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Touch our children, our boys, our girls. Yes, Lord. Touch their children. Yes, Lord. Our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, our family, our friends, our husbands, our wives, yes, Lord. our pals. Yes, Lord. Save them, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch the membership of this church. Yes, Lord. And whatever it takes, Holy Ghost, yes, whatever yes. It takes to today. bring people yes, to their knees. Yes, yes. I pray you do it. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. Glory to God. Thank Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Thank God. You, Jesus. Praise you love him today. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, now let me talk to you just a moment. Thank you, Lord. Now, don't ask me why and you should have told us and stuff like that. I'm not interested in none of that. I've been without hot water now for almost a week. And uh, simple reason for it, I personally hadn't had the funds to go get the gas I need for the RV. 
You got to remember, I don't draw salary here. On occasions, not every time, but on occasions, I receive offering and sometimes a generous offering. But it takes more than a generous offering for me. It takes more than just an occasional gift. It takes something all the time, every time, all the time, every time, and those times, times seven. Hey Amen. I have to live like you live. I'm going to ask you today to dig deep and to get a good offering. And uh, you need to be faithful with your tithe. Yes. Turn in your tithe. Hey Amen. Well, Brother Poole, does that help? Well, I'm hurt now because it had been being done by some. Amen. So let's do something today. I was under the tent visiting. And two times I couldn't even give the offer. I'm telling you the truth. I couldn't do it. But I said, well, we gave you something last Sunday. It's gone. It's gone. But I said, well, last Sunday we gave you something. Well, that's gone too. This is this week. Amen. Amen. Make sense? Yes. 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 So, prepare your tithe and prepare a good offering today. And I would be grateful. I appreciate it. And God bless you. I love you. Remember the service. Wednesday night, I'm concerned about Wednesday nights. I know people work. I know all of that. I know all of that. I know it's hard. But if you can come, come. But we can't keep doing this Wednesday night over and over. And over and over again for two people. Just can't keep doing it. But if you'll come, we can do it. All right, you, you're acting sad toward me now. <laughs> Please don't act sad toward me. I'm going to be searching for some places to go and preach. Not on Sunday morning. Not on, thank you, Ruby. <laughs> not on Sunday, not on Wednesday night. Try to raise some funds to help us all. Thank you, Geneva. Thank you. Thank you, Ruby. Ruby and Monroe, thank you all very much. Praise God. Thank you. Sister Pastor, appreciate it. Glory to God. Thank you, Theodore. Thank you so much. Everybody give Theodore a big hand. Amen. Thank you, Sally Joe. Wanda, bless you. Bless your heart. Amen. I'll just call you George Henry. How's that? I give everybody a nickname. Amen. Wait on you, Michelle. Wait on Emily. You write the check, Emily? Yes. Just leave both places blank. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you love him? Yes, you love each other. Yes. You love your pastor. Yes. Tell me once in a while. Love you, brother. Love you, brother. Love you too, Brother Turner. Love you, Kenny. Amen. Thank you, Michelle. Praise God. Thank you, Emily. Now, my last word of advice to you ladies is when you're cooking at home, 
You can cook two things as easy as you cook one thing. If you're cooking a pound of cornbread, these kids don't know what a pound is. <laughs> you can you can cook two frying pan pounds as easy as you can one. That applies to a cake, a pie, or a fried chicken. Everybody say amen. Amen. Stand please. God bless your hearts. I love you today. Uh, if you're not with me on Facebook, uh, write me and ask me to be your friend. I'll grant that friendship. And uh, uh, you'll notice how I brag about Delonica Church often. Yes. I'm proud to be pastor of Word of Life on Parkway. Glory to God. Dismiss you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. May God's great grace be with you all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not going to be I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. i Oh, no. No. Uh, uh, that organ, yeah. that organ is, uh, is a giveaway if somebody wants it. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's how we got this. Now, no guarantee goes with it because it it tubes tubes are out and we don't go to uh, uh, it's it's not not worth worth it. for us it's not worth repairing uh, and for us it don't work but don't you don't have to tell everybody everything no just when you say green, green you know. yeah yeah as is as is as that's is it. come get that. Because that's what you put on Facebook all the time. As he is free. I'll push on and help them load it. We had a thing last night about this. It was on Facebook. It's huge. I don't know the size of it. But it's the nativity scene. And it is beautiful. It's kind of personal. And I mean, it is the kind of stuff I like. Being able to try to move the entertainment center over. She's like, well, you lift it up and let it go. And that thing lift it up. You are so happy. And we have a good idea. I love you so much. And I'm so glad you're my pastor. And I really do love you. The whole of the song that was done. George Gina. You got a big thing on your face. 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 You got a big thing